A late April Arctic chill for the UK, whilst an early season exceptional heat wave unfolds across Iberia. What is going on with our weather at the moment? And with two bank holiday weekends coming up, how might our weather patterns evolve over the next few weeks? I'll be answering all those questions, plus many more, in this week's Deep Dive. Just a reminder, if you enjoy these deep dives, or in fact, if you enjoy any of the stuff that we put out on YouTube, of course, we've got the 10 day trend on Wednesdays, we've got the week ahead forecast on Mondays, and occasional special forecasts that we put out, especially for our YouTube audience, including this. This is exclusive to YouTube. Then please do hit the like and subscribe button. Feel free to comment. We try and answer some of your comments as well from week to week. So, yep, yeah, please do encourage us. But to do more of these things by subscribing because uh, it does help um, justify doing these longer explainers about our weather and there's certainly plenty to explain this week. First of all, what a beautiful satellite image at the moment. Stunning weather out there right now where I am in Devon. Uh, blue skies for now, but uh, there is some cloud filling in across the UK, especially northern parts. And you can see the speckled cloud just to the north of Scotland there and down the North Sea coast. Showers, basically, because we've got the winds coming from the north. And those winds, they're cold. They're moving over milder seas. And so they're picking up some of the warmth from below. And we're seeing this convection develop with showers. But really, for the rest of Tuesday, unlike Monday, where we saw some heavy rain in places, for the rest of Tuesday, the showers are mostly, now this is going to run through the last 24 hours, but you can see the wet weather that we saw across southern areas. But for the rest of Tuesday, having seen that disappear through overnight, we're going to see showers confined to northern Scotland generally, one or two for Northern Ireland, one or two for North Sea coast. But uh, mostly these showers are for northern Scotland. And this is the rain-snow radar imagery. So the blue is the rain and the white is snow and hail and sleet. And you can see wintry showers there for northern parts of Scotland continuing. But amounts settling fairly negligible, mostly confined to the higher ground. For many, it's a beautiful afternoon out there. Now, a lot of people have been talking about how cold spring has been so far and when will it warm up. Just want to uh, address that because actually it's not been that cold. Now, we started off cold this spring and this shows the temperature trend through spring so far. The black line through the middle there is what a perfectly average spring would do with temperatures with a general rise through March, April and May. And there's the final figure, that's an average spring right there. But the dotted line here, which waves about a bit more, is what we've actually seen this spring so far, the UK average temperature. And sure, there was a dip around the middle of March, but since then, temperatures have been recovering. And that dot lying exactly on the black line means that we are precisely at around average for this time in spring as far as the average UK temperature is concerned. So we've had some warm days, we've had some colder days, but it's been about average so far. And of course, we've been spoiled in recent years with some very nice spring weather. So uh, compared with that, it perhaps has felt on the cold side. And the fact that it has been fairly dull this spring, there's been a lack of sunshine and there's been an awful lot of wet weather. This shows the rainfall amount, a similar sort of thing. The black line running through the middle is the average for the uh, typical spring in the UK. And then the dotted line shows how this year's spring rainfall has compared to it. So we are currently running at well above average spring rainfall. Of course, a lot of that fell during March and across southern parts of the UK. But we saw some wet weather uh, during the last couple of weeks as well, especially, again, across southern parts of the UK. So it's been average as far as temperatures are concerned, but it has been wet, it has been dull. So a lot of people, I think, have uh, taken that to mean that it's been a cool spring. And it has, of course, been disappointing if you like warm sunshine. Let's go back to the here and now because, of course, it's currently a fine day out there today with plenty of sunshine. But I'd say it's going to be the sunniest day of the week because it's going to turn increasingly cloudy as Atlantic air begins to return. It's a slow process though with the Atlantic air returning. This is the bigger picture. We've seen low pressure move into Scandinavia and what we've seen then is this Arctic air flow. I just put on the temperatures there and the Arctic air currently lying over much of uh, Northwest Europe. Now, zooming out a touch and you can see a big temperature contrast between the UK and southern parts of Europe. More on that 
in just a moment. But certainly it's been a cold start to the week. Now, I'm just going to play that forward. And what you'll see over the next few days, essentially, is that it's going to slowly turn milder from the southwest. But it is going to take its time. So Tuesday is the nadir of this UK cold spell before temperatures trend upwards from the southwest during Wednesday. Really, it's the far southwest where we're going to see mild rare on Wednesday itself. It's still staying below average across most of the rest of the UK. But you can see later Wednesday and as we go into Wednesday night and as well into Thursday, the temperatures are beginning to climb upwards towards the southwest, but increasingly nibbling away at this cold airflow further north as well. However, the colder air does linger across northeastern parts of the UK, even into Thursday, Friday and the start of the weekend. So this is the uh, start of the weekend, for example. You can see that cold air in the far northeast of Scotland whilst warmer conditions affect the rest of the UK. So back to the uh, time being. And at the moment, what we're seeing is these Atlantic weather fronts begin to make progress during Wednesday, bringing thickening cloud, bringing outbreaks of uh, mainly light rain at first before the jet stream picks up this frontal feature into Thursday and that's going to develop quite a potent area of rainfall and we've got this occluded front starting to reactivate across northern parts. So two bands of rain on Thursday, one in the south bringing some very wet weather, some embedded thunderstorms and one in the north moving into the cold air bringing some hill snow across Scotland and some wet weather to lower levels as well. Once those fronts move out of the way we're, we've got this setup where we've got low pressure towards the west higher pressure towards the south and into the weekend much more of a humid airflow from the southwest. Now as I mentioned, let's pause it there for the start of the weekend. We keep the cold air in the far north of Scotland and you can see just this streak of jet stream there coming in from a different direction. But elsewhere the UK is mainly affected by a large area of low pressure out towards the west and that's bringing in this southwesterly airflow across the UK is bringing in some weather fronts but at the same time higher pressure sits over the continent and that means that it's going to be a bit more settled after that spell of rain on Thursday and into Friday it's trending towards a more settled look for the weekend but not entirely sunny not entirely dry it's basically going to be quite showery quite humid and with higher temperatures as well for much of the UK away from the far northeast. And so the high pressure over the continent means that with the low pressure to the west of the UK, some weather fronts will make inroads. They'll bring thicker cloud into the west at times through the weekend, but they'll break up into showers really on Saturday, Sunday and into Monday as well, Bank Holiday Monday. It's all looking quite similar, quite showery. There'll be some fairly lively downpours at times, but in between the showers, some drier interludes, some brighter interludes and so on. You can see this dip in the jet stream there by Sunday as well. So that indicates we've got this upper area of low pressure. We've also got this surface low just to the northwest of the UK, but at the same time, we've got higher pressure to the south. And so in combination, these features would indicate, especially given the time of year, the sun gaining strength, inputting some energy, warming up the land, rising air and so on. Really Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we're talking about showers and some quite heavy downpours, perhaps some thunderstorms at times as well, particularly across southern parts of the UK. A lot of cloud cover, but at times the cloud will break up, particularly towards the east, and certainly looking, as I mentioned, much milder, or even you could say warmer than it has been recently. So temperatures trending upwards. Now let's look at the weather graphics for a moment and this is the rest of Tuesday. Sunny spells for many but the cloud is tending to fill in. We've got this mixture of cumulus and stratocumulus, some showers across northern parts of Scotland, one or two for Northern Ireland as well. Best of the sunshine towards southern parts of England and South Wales and around the coasts as well of course because it's at that time of year where the, the sun heats up the, the land and that's where you get the, the rising air during the daytime. Into Tuesday night then and it becomes a lot more cloudy towards the west and southwest compared with the previous night. And the first signs of that change that I mentioned, that ingress of Atlantic air towards the southwest. So increasingly low cloud and uh, 
some damp weather pushing into Cornwall and Devon by the end of the night. Also thicker cloud arriving into Northern Ireland, a few spots of rain here. And the cloudier skies towards the west and the southwest mean that it's mostly going to be frost free towards the west and the southwest. But across Scotland, Northern England, Eastern England, again another frosty one possible. Temperatures dipping in the North Highlands, for example, down to around minus seven once again. We saw minus seven last night, of course, in Tullock Bridge. Now, skipping ahead to Wednesday afternoon, and you can see generally thicker cloud across much of the UK, especially towards the south and the west, and some spots of mainly light rain for western parts of Northern Ireland. Hill fog for some Dartmoor, Exmoor, Bodmin Moor, Brecon Beacons as well, some damp weather here. And for Northern England, Southern Scotland, chance of a few showers developing as well. But for many, it's a dry day. And for uh, North Midlands, North Wales, Northwoods, it's largely bright with some sunny spells coming through. Wintry showers, mixture of rain and sleet at lower levels and snow over the hills affecting Shetland and Orkney. Most of the snow falling above around two or 300 metres at this stage. Then into Wednesday night, Increasingly, there's this trend towards cloudier conditions and wetter weather moving up. So this is Thursday morning and we've got some heavier rain arriving into south and southwest England, into Wales as well. And by the afternoon, this wetter weather is across the southern half of the UK. Within this, some heavier bursts, perhaps even some rumbles of thunder. And we've also got that occluded front I mentioned affecting Scotland. That's going to bring some thicker cloud to Scotland, some outbreaks of rain and some hill snow with two, 20 centimetres possible of above, above about 800 metres for northern parts of Scotland on Thursday. Now, by Friday, most of the UK is in the milder air. I'll show you temperatures in just a sec, but most of the country is in the milder air, aside from northeast Scotland, where it's staying fairly chilly. And there's a lot of cloud cover on Friday. Still some showery rain about, particularly for Scotland, Northern Ireland, western parts of England and Wales. And a lot of low cloud as well covering the hills. And so that's Friday. And then into the weekend, we keep that low cloud covering the hills in the west and the north. Increasingly, some signs of brightness developing in the southeast. But what we'll see through Saturday is increasingly uh, showers developing, uh, perhaps some longer spells of rain as well, but quite showery conditions quite humid. We haven't had a humid feel like we'll experience this weekend for some time, uh, not through the spring anyway. With dew points uh, at around 12 Celsius or even a touch higher, we're going to feel the effects of the Atlantic air. It's going to feel a bit more humid. A lot of cloud cover. That cloud will be quite low in places, particularly around coasts and hills in the west. And we'll see some patchy rain over some of those hills and coasts. And as I mentioned, the humidity and the increased warmth and the combination of low pressure at the surface and low pressure to the, well, quite high up near the jet stream towards the northwest will lead to the development of some fairly lively showers at times. And it's a similar picture through Saturday, Sunday and Monday. So, yes, warmer this weekend, but not entirely dry, not entirely sunny. However, it's not going to be wash out either. There's going to be some decent drier and brighter interludes at times. It's one of those where you just need to keep an eye on the, the latest rainfall forecast on the Met Office app or the rainfall radar and see where these clusters of showers are developing. It's going to be similar through Saturday, Sunday and Monday. If anything, Monday looks a bit drier, looks a bit more um, promising in terms of settled weather compared with Saturday and Sunday. But yeah, one for um, now casting, I think, this weekend. See where those showers are bubbling up. Now, in in terms of temperatures, this is, this is quite interesting. If we just take a look at the temperature trend for the next few days, it really does rise across the UK. Now, taking somewhere that's likely to be the warm spot this weekend, so that's London, and we're looking at temperatures rising from what they are at the moment, the low double figures, so 12, 10 Celsius or so, right up to 17 or 18 Celsius on Friday and into Saturday, perhaps even 20 or 21 Celsius. Actually, somewhere like Hull could see even higher temperatures, although it's not showing up on the, on the graph there, interestingly enough. But somewhere around perhaps Cambridge, uh, let's try Norwich. In fact, we might need to zoom in and find a few more locations that will be notable warm spots this weekend, because I saw somewhere in eastern England showing up at 21 Celsius earlier. And it is a possibility. Let's try Cambridge. The raw computer model stuff isn't showing anything particularly exciting, but uh, you have to take my word for it. It's, I think, 20 or 21 Celsius possible across some eastern parts of England this weekend because, um, well, if we get some cloud breaks, if we get some sunshine because of that humid airflow, temperatures can soon climb. Uh, so we're starting the week with low double figures and then we're going up to the high teens 
perhaps 20 or 21 Celsius by Saturday, Sunday. Something like Edinburgh, similar temperature trend upwards. Aberdeen, now we're getting into the um, northeast of Scotland where it's going to be cooler, but certainly for Lerwick, no significant temperature trend there upwards. We keep the chilly air throughout. So below average conditions in the far northeast of Scotland, but elsewhere it is turning hotter. However, the hottest air at the moment, the most remarkable weather story at the moment is across Iberia. Now let's take a look at what's going on there. At the moment we've got this combination of higher pressure, this ridge of higher pressure, air coming in from the Atlantic and you can see the jet stream. Let's take a look at say day three and you can see this, this warm sector in between a warm front and a cold front, this warmth across Iberia there and also in other years this might not have led to such exceptional temperatures but we've got this really severe drought across Iberia at the moment and that's leading to this early season exceptional heat wave and let me just take a look at the uh, expected temperatures before I do that this is an interesting thing to show which uh, the colours here don't represent temperatures. This is Spain, Portugal, Gibraltar, North Africa. The colours don't represent temperatures. They represent how extreme the forecast is on a scale from minus 100 up to plus 100. Minus 100 would be extreme cold. Plus 100 would be extreme heat. And this, the extreme values are taken from past computer model runs from the European model. And this is visualised using windy.com. Basically, anything coloured in red is above uh, 90 and the dark reds here are above 95 percent and so uh, we've got values coming through for Seville, Granada of 91, 96, 92. I think yesterday some of them were showing 100 so right up towards the top end of the extremes for this part of the world and for this time of year. And what kind of temperatures are we talking about? It's generally around 15 degrees above average for the time of year. The kinds of temperatures that you wouldn't necessarily um, be surprised about in the middle of summer, but this is the end of April, and the hottest places are likely to be somewhere like Seville or Cordoba. You can see Thursday, Friday, 37, and then Cordoba, 39. This is raw computer model outputs. Could, could be a degree or two either side of that, but given that the uh, one of the national records for Spain is 37.4 Celsius, depending on which organisation, which region that you, uh, you look at. It's, it's fairly complicated, actually, for, for the April national temperature records for Spain. But uh, the AE Met national record is 37.4 Celsius, so potentially record-breaking for Spain in April. Malaga there, going to be a bit cooler because it's by the coast, likewise for Valence Valencia, but you know, peaking there on Tuesday at 29 Celsius. And Madrid... Also pretty hot, but really it's southern Spain and also North Africa, actually. Uh, the, North Afri uh, the Morocco temperature record is 41 Celsius, so that could be broken. There's Marrakesh, 40 Celsius on uh, Friday. Lisbon as well, really quite uh, warm for Lisbon for the time of year. And elsewhere across Portugal, 34 Celsius, and um, I think 36 or 37 Celsius is the record to beat for uh, Portugal, it's 36 point something, I, I think. But yeah, truly exceptional heat, and that is worth keeping an eye on for um, Iberia, of course, because we've seen these exceptional heat waves during recent summers. And so, if these kinds of conditions, where you've got this long running severe drought across Spain, and then that helps this solar insulation heat up the ground at this time of year, then really it's one to watch for the rest of spring and into summer because. Even though temperatures fall during the weekend back to the mid-30s, they're still well above average into next week. And for the next two weeks, the indications are that we're going to see well above average temperatures across Spain and Portugal. And that could have implications on the UK summer. Could. Could have implications on the UK summer. Because, of course, if you've got all this hot air to the south of us and this drought which leads to uh, very hot air quickly developing across Iberia, then you just need a switch in the wind direction to bring that heat towards the UK a lot of coulds there. So one to watch, that's all I'm saying. Now, as far as the UK outlook is concerned, um, I mentioned the very hot air across Spain there. And it's 
visible there on the um, temperature anomaly map of Europe from the European model for the next seven days. This goes actually from Monday, yesterday, through to the next Monday. And this is the average temperature anomaly for that seven-day period. Very hot air there for Spain. Cold air for the north and the east of the UK, but uh, some signs of some mild air towards the southwest. And that's certainly how things are trending into the weekend. So for the following seven-day period, this is how it looks. And this is next Monday, so the first bank holiday Monday, up until the coronation bank holiday Monday. And this is showing a greater chance of warmer than average conditions across the whole of the UK, except for Shetland there, and still that heat across Spain, but certainly much of Western Europe in the warmth. So how does that translate to our weather patterns? Well, this from the Met Office modeling, well actually it's multi-model, it's taking into account uh, the Met Office model, the American model and the European model. This is the most likely weather pattern throughout much of next week. And what we've got is similar to the weekend really, lower pressure towards the west of the UK, higher pressure towards the east or to the south of the UK, and weather fronts generally trying to move in from the west. And as they do so, they could bring some thicker cloud at times to western areas and some rainfall, but they're, as they're pushing into high pressure, more likely to break up into showers. So generally quite a, a showery situation um, going into next week, but plenty of fine and settled weather in between the showers. So really it's a case of bright spells and showers with the uh, greatest chance of cloudier and more changeable conditions towards the northwest, greatest chance of some sunny spells towards the southeast, and above average temperatures across the UK. That's what these numbers are above average temperatures. And so we're still talking about mid to high teens, possibly uh, 20, 21 Celsius in places with the warmest air towards the southeast. That's how it's looking through next week. Quite humid, I guess, at times with uh, southwesterly airflow or southerly airflow. But then into the following week, well, conditions become very uncertain. It becomes a lot more difficult to tell what the signal is from the various computer models. There's one or two things that we can pick out. And uh, let's show the temperatures first of all. This is the temperature anomaly for the coronation bank holiday Monday through to the following bank holiday Monday, again from the European model. And this is showing around average temperatures for southern areas, slightly above for northern areas. So perhaps not quite as warm as next week's likely to be. And also perhaps a bit more changeable as well. This shows the pressure anomaly for the same period. So coronation bank holiday Monday through to the following seven days. And it shows this faint colour here. I don't even know what colour it is because I'm colour blind, but I know that it corresponds to a greater chance of lower pressure over northwest Europe. And then higher pressure towards, uh, well, west of Portugal there. And that would indicate Instead of low pressure to the west of the UK, more centred towards the UK. It would indicate slightly more changeable weather, slightly more showery weather developing. And that's borne out in the rainfall anomalies. For that same period, that seven-day period, this shows uh, a greater chance of um, higher or positive rainfall anomalies effectively. So more likely to be wetter than average than drier than average, but not a strong signal by any means. So what can we say about this bank holiday weekend, we can say that it's certainly going to be warmer than it is at the moment with mid to high teens for many and 20 or 21 Celsius in some of the brighter spots. But it's going to be more humid. There'll be a lot of cloud around at times, especially in the west, and there'll be some heavy downpours developing, perhaps even some thunderstorms as well, particularly on Saturday and Sunday. Then through next week, it looks likely that we'll have low pressure to the west, higher pressure to the south or the east. And that's going to lead to, again, plenty of fine weather and some warmth as well, but always the possibility of some showers at times, particularly towards the west. Then the following week, perhaps becoming more changeable. So the bank holiday weekend in which there is a coronation, it's virtually impossible at this stage, 11, 12 days ahead, to give a specific forecast for a specific day for a specific location. That would be impossible. Um, but what we can say is that there's a trend into the following week for the weather to become a bit more changeable, a bit more mixed and a bit cooler with a bit more rain likely as well. So no strong signals either way at the moment for the uh, bank holiday weekend after this bank holiday weekend. But of course, we'll keep you updated right here at the Met Office when 
we get a clearer of idea of what's going to happen and I'll have some more or at least Alex will have some more detail on that in the 10-day trend tomorrow so make sure you don't miss that and of course to avoid missing these things best advice is to hit the subscribe button and then you can enjoy many more in-depth explainers like this hope it's been useful and uh, yeah enjoy this bank holiday weekend and the next one if you can